Thanks for stopping by to check out my latest video. This video is about Gorse and there's a website and a GitHub repository that you can see the open source code. The gorse.io website gives some more details and examples and allows you to visualize code repositories like GitHub and it does an animated timeline and I think it's really cool and kind of fun to be able to watch a GitHub repository get started and and grow through the different days and times as different people work on it and so right here is a screenshot of the Gorse tool running and it's a visualization tool for source control repositories and at the center of it here is the tree where the root of the repository is and then the directories are branches so you can see the directories and then the individual files are the leaves out here it all happens in real time and it's I think cool to watch also it animates things and gives you some options there's a lot of different controls which I'll show those and also you can create an mp4 if you wanted to put it up on github or put it on YouTube or put it wherever you're interested to have an mp4 you do need a couple tools to do that and I'll be walking through the process of getting this tool installed and running I will be using it all inside of the Windows Sandbox, which is a free virtual machine technology from Microsoft. I have other videos about that. I will be using that to run all of this inside of the VM. I didn't want to install all these tools on my main machine. That's why I did it inside the Windows Sandbox. And it will run just a little bit slower since it is running inside of a virtual machine. Let's go ahead and get the VM opened up and I'll show you what's involved to get this up and running. So here I've pulled up the Windows Sandbox with a virtual machine running and inside here I pulled up the Gorse GitHub page. We can scroll down to see how many releases there are and all the different files. 36 contributors, the different languages used. And there's also a link here to the gorse.io website, which I'll pull that up. And there's a whole lot of options. I'll be showing a few of those in the video, but there's lots of different things you can do with the configuration of this tool. Some of them are interactive. Down here is a list of the interactive keyboard commands. You can toggle the camera mode using the V key, randomize colors. You can toggle the directory name in the display mode, whether or not you wanna show file names. You can show or hide the usernames. That would be like your GitHub usernames who are making the code changes. You can adjust the simulation speed adjust the time scale and if you hit the tab key you can cycle through visible users if you hit F12 you can take a screenshot and also go full screen mode with the alt enter keys there's a few other instructions here for the interface you can use your mouse button and scroll wheel to zoom in and out and like left click and right click will do different things to the animation of the GitHub repo. So that's basically what the GitHub page says. If we go to the actual website, gorse.io, there's the Windows installer, and that's the one that I used. And you can see some different pictures of different GitHub repos in these pictures in the background there. So we have that web page and when we get to encode the video there's a couple things that we have to do 
So here is the command you use to make an MP4 file. And we'll be running that momentarily. This is the video web page on GitHub. The easiest way to record a video, of course, is using a third party video capture program. And so they mention OBS or Fraps. And then there's raw video output and encoding. And it creates a uncompressed sequence of screenshots in a PPM format, which can then be processed by a video encoder such as FFmpeg. And that's what I'm going to do in this video. In order to get all this to work, I had to download this FFmpeg. In order to do that, you have to go to this other website. And if you look on here, you will find there's builds. Depending on which release you want. So you can see here there's an essentials and that's the one that I used. So I just downloaded the zip file and it included an executable and I'll show that here in just one second. Here in the upper left of the screen is a list of the files that I downloaded including Visual Studio Code, the Git, here's the Gorse file that I downloaded and then I installed it. If we go to my control panel we can see here that Gorse is installed as well as some other tools like Python, Node.js, Git and during that process it also installed a bunch of different Visual Studio build tools and things like that which I'll be using in other videos. If we double click into this FFmpeg and then we can see in here there's a bin directory and so right there is the FFmpeg.exe and that is the file that we need and so if we look over here where I downloaded the code that we're going to be looking at in, in this. So over here in the right, there is the FFmpeg file that I was just showing. So I copied it into the root of the code that we're going to be analyzing and visualizing with this tool. So that's where the FFmpeg file goes. And I did already generate the MP4 once in order to test on this system. And in order to be able to play the file, I downloaded the VLC media player and that can be found at videoland.org. At this point, we have the ability now to play the MP4. Once we have created it, we have the FFmpeg utility installed on the computer and we've downloaded and installed the Gorse tool. The last thing is to have some source code to look at with this data visualization tool. And I'm gonna use this GitHub repo here, chat dev. That is actually another video that I'll be making shortly. It's a really cool AI chatbot video. That's the source code that I chose to use. And what we can do then is come here and say get the URL so I can copy that and then we'll open up a new command window and go ahead and get this code pulled down. I've created a directory called code and a subdirectory called one and now I will go ahead and run the git clone command and paste in the URL for the chat dev repository and that clones it into the chat dev folder. And if we go into that folder, we'll see all of the files for that repository. Now, since I've already done this before, I'm gonna actually go back to the original directory since it's already all set up.
here if we just go into this chat dev we can see all of the files including the ff mpeg which is there and the mp4 file that i created the raw file that was created using the gorse tool and i also took a screenshot it, the tool allows you to take a screenshot if you hit f12 now we have the source code pulled down we have our video encoder and all the other tools we need now let's go ahead and go on to a command line and run the tool and i will show you what that looks like I'll go ahead and run the command, force, and hit enter. And it pops up a window, and now it's showing basically the users who are creating files in the GitHub repository. The chat dev that I mentioned here, it's open in the right bottom side of the screen here that is what it is analyzing now and it's visualizing it and it's building it out basically minute by minute by each day and in the window if you wanted to skip ahead and see other times you can just click your mouse down here and it will move ahead and visualize that data now because this is inside of a vm it runs a little slow if you run this on actual host hardware it'll be much faster but it's really cool because it's showing the different users they look like kind of like a head there and you can see the name it's called think we so you can see what that person is doing in the repo and then here is another user github user or programmer that is creating files and you can see you move your mouse over the names of the files you can see the actual files that they're creating and see the directories and the files basically how the tool visualizes the data and it will just go through the timeline and lay everything out as everything happens in the github repository i think it's really cool you can maximize the screen and the camera mode I'll move this to the upper right now so we can look at the github repo commands here the camera controls there's an overview which keeps the entire repository in view that is the default as it says here if you want to change that you can change the camera mode to track and also you can pan by using the left mouse button it pans the camera and also you can rotate if you manually rotate the view by dragging the right mouse on the background it also disables the automatic camera rotation until you toggle the camera mode and then you can zoom in and out with your mouse wheel and there's a lot of other commands timeline and chronology start and stop positions you can hit the space bar to pause it elasticity is kind of fun you can enable that here it's a fun if somewhat pointless effect that controls how rubbery directory branches behave when they have a force applied to them so that's kind of fun to play around with you can also change the background color and then here is where I mentioned you can go ahead and do the F12 if you press F12 when you're in the window it will take a screenshot and I can show that here momentarily this was a screenshot now it's zoomed in on part of it the resolution is 3840 by 2050 if I move the screen around here we can see the name of one of the developers on the project and the name of some of the files that I had moused over so that's what the screenshot does yes there's other things you can do to set fonts set colors date formats logos titles
well, I just wanted to lay out the process to get it running and to take screenshots and to see all the tools you need. Now I'll quickly walk through the process of creating an MP4 file. All right, how do we do that? I need to go back to my other command line. Let's go back to that. And that is here. If I scroll back, I can show the command that I used. And I got that command, which is right here, from their website, right here on the video page inside the GitHub repo. And you have to scroll down a little bit. There's two commands, the GORS, and then you set the resolution, which is right here, and the name of the raw file, which is PPM. And it may take a little while to go all the way through it. I didn't let it finish. I just hit control C and terminated the batch file so that I could generate a shorter video. And then you can see the second command here using FFmpeg. And so there's a lot of explanation about what all that means, but the end result is it generates a file, whatever you want to call it right there. I just left the default name in their example. A lot of things you can configure there. Went ahead and did that. And right here is the MP4 uh, file that it generated. And I also opened it up here inside of the video LAN player. So I'll just go ahead and hit play. It's only like eight seconds long. And I think the frame rate's probably a little messed up just because, again, I'm re recording inside a virtual machine. Then you can see the explosion of all of the files that happens when things get moving on the project. And then, of course, you can do whatever you like with the MP4 file. That is the process to install the tool, to use it, how to configure it in real time, and also some of the command line parameters you can use, and then creating an MP4 file that you can then use in your YouTube videos or wherever you would like. Well, I hope you found this tool to be interesting. I think it's really cool. And I thank you for stopping by and watching the video. Have a great day. If you like this channel, please like and subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified when I post new content.